bit on this this touch a tiny teeny bit on AOC's dress in it um Alessandria Ocasio Cortez her dress at the Met Gala specifically right let's touch on that so obviously most of you have seen the dress itself it says tax the rich tax the rich is very um tone deaf it doesn't really make much sense it's a try and often repeated um line by people on left especially in america it doesn't actually do anything it's pretty performative and in general it's just a little bit mm, do you know what i mean in terms of um actually influencing things and changing things for the better it just does absolutely nothing if anything like i said prior to the other podcast the best thing it actually fits like a glove and makes a bum look amazing so congrats on that but in general the interesting part about it is that as time goes on, people end up revealing themselves. And I think what we've seen with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, she slowly but surely revealed herself to be just as bad as the people that she decries whenever she's doing those impassioned speeches and shit. She's just as bad because there are many things that she could have enacted, many things that she could have helped to spearhead that would have actually changed people's lives for the better. And if anything, um, this sort of like performance whatever it is where you go to the met gala and where a dress says tag the rich even though every ticket of yeah the tickets of entry to go to those kind of things are flipping you know thirty five thousand dollars or something nonsense like that you still have to be invited even to get so you don't it's not even like you can it's not even just because you have the money you can go you have to still get invited in order for you to you know get a ticket to go which is kind of similar to like you know sneakers app which i mean so it's actually like when you enter the raffle you get the shoes for free you still have to enter the raffle and hope you get selected and then if you get selected you have the privilege of being able to spend your money at that store to get those shoes absolutely bizarre same with this so again i think she thought she was doing something super subversive as you can see of her tweet the medium is a message um but i think arriving to the uh, met gala in this dress with people who l largely for the most part like you welcome your politics especially to your face maybe behind your back they're completely different but for the most part people that like you doesn't necessarily scream political message doesn't necessarily scream protest doesn't really scream shaking things up um you got invited it's hard to not get dis. it's hard to get disinvited for wearing something so asinine and run of the mill and lukewarm as tax the rich on your dress do you know what I mean it doesn't really say much um and then she kind of tried to explain a way why she did this and the rationale behind it the medium is a message she's basically taking herself to be some sort of quasi political performance artist i don't know but regardless it's absolutely r-worded the caption of it itself the instagram picture says um power to work with of Robert James, a sustainably focused black woman immigrant designer. Like, imagine collecting your friends like that. Cause I know some people do do that. I remember when I was growing up and I was kind of getting to a scene the first time, that was something that I had to kind of reconcile with in my head. The idea that I was being tokenized by the girls that I was bumping into because they hadn't necessarily met a kind of cool black guy like me. But then over time, you know, you kind of get over it. But some people do generally tend to have groups of friends like this where all their friends look like a United Colors of Benetton advertisement and it's quite purposefully done and it's really disgusting. You see it often, especially in a scene. It's just a thing that people tend to do. It's really odd. Um, but hey, you continue. But imagine describing your friend like this in plain words, sustainably, right, focused, right? That's the reason why you chose her. So not because she actually makes good work, but because her kind of um, point of view, oh, what point of view what would you say? The way that she approaches design matches your political messaging or whatever it may be. She's a black woman immigrant. So again, choosing somebody based on their gender, which is basically what they're fighting against. But hey, we continue. He went from signing a dream uh, flea market to Brooklyn to winning the CFDA against all odds and then work together to kick open the doors of the Met. This time is now for child care. The time is now for child care, health care and climate so thanks tax the rich. What is that dress going to do to change those things? Wouldn't a bigger protest would have been to reject the invitation? Again, make a spectacle out of it. Maybe instead of rejecting the invitation, you rock up there with some disadvantaged kids and give them the opportunity to basically speak their piece on the red carpet. I don't know, it's a bit naff, it's a bit corny, but maybe all those things would have been would have been um a far better options in terms of actually serving the people that she thinks she's serving than wearing that dress and thinking that she was actually doing something it's utterly one of the most bizarre things i've seen um and then we have this massive text wall of information that she provided when somebody asked her on an ama after the fact because i guess the kickback and the harassment online was getting too much so she had to explain herself and make it make sense the person on Instagram stories asked the following, said, love your dress, but what do you want to say to critics after attending the Met Gala? She says, 
I thought about the criticism I'd get, so she thought about it prior to doing it, as most people who want to get attention online, everything is intentional, nothing is by chance, you do everything with the understanding and the acceptance and the willing and the hope that people are going to go crazy and get angry over the things you do, you just hope it doesn't go too far, right? No physical no physical violence or anything, nonsense like that, but as long as I say mean words to you, the algorithm doesn't care if it's mean or if they're good words, the fact that people are talking about you is a good thing and it's definitely going to help her kind of leverage that kind of attention into other deals that she ends up getting down further down the line so she's very clever in that regard um she's just clever in general you know I mean? it's just a shame that she's so um incongruent but we continue since the moment i won the election that's kind of been the expected and normalized to me um the irony is that oh, okay please okay the irony is that when women in power take the pro the prospect of criticism to be um cautious in their actions they are then criticized for being inauthentic or too calculated ultimately the haters hated and the people who are thoughtful were thoughtful but we were but we all had a conversation about taxing the rich in front of very very lobby people who lobby against it and puncture the full four of excess and spectacle not really to be honest everyone was kind of mocking the fact that you're wearing that dress as such a up as such a as such a um farcical event Jeremy, especially with the world being on fire right now that's what people were laughing at mostly but um i do think she has a point in terms of saying what she say here she said um ultimately the haters hated and the people who were thoughtful were thoughtful i do think that dress as bad as it was it did expose the fact that if you weren't a fan of hers this was definitely a layup right for you to kind of dunk it in and hold onto the rim shake that shit maybe break the glass and if you were a fan of her this was an opportune moment to step in even though you knew she fucked up to basically cap for her and you know essentially let people know that you are team aoc for life ride or die this is basically a perfect moment for it but it doesn't excuse the corny and lameness of that whole thing she continues and says honestly our culture is deeply disdainful and unsupportive of women this supposedly is now turned into an attack on women people calling you out for wearing a dumb dress at a flipping self-serving you know excessive opulent dinner that doesn't do anything for anybody um isn't an attack on women it's an attack on you specifically right um especially women of color and working class women of course she's got all the badges in it uh, i wonder if later on down in life that later on down in life we're gonna end up turning all these things like you know things that you can't help right being a woman being somebody of color growing up in a poor neighborhood they're things that you're just like born into you can't choose your parents or your circumstances you're born into but people for whatever reason use those things as like achievement badges like it's like you go in the army and you get your little cross or you get your little star whatever it may be called and they put pin them on their chest i wonder if further down the line we will turn those things into like real achievements and turn them into stars that get pinned on your jacket in certain places it's like yeah it's just get over yourself the more in, in, sorry it continues here it says um whether it's a lack of childcare support or especially uh, reserving pillory for the elected women and femme people the more intersection one has the deeper the disdain i'm so used to doing the same exact thing that men do including popular male progressive executive officials and getting completely different response so all i can do is acknowledge that reality and make a decision as i am and as i grow through my life the intersectionality of it is bizarre because the intersectionality of it that she keeps mentioning is essentially what gave her the platform to do the thing that she's doing now the fact that she is you know from a low-income neighborhood the fact that she did grow up in a one person in a one parent household the fact that she did work in a bar all these things helped to get her where she wanted to get to and now suddenly because people are criticizing her she's now using it as something to beat herself with or whatever like uh, what it just seems so bizarre all of it seems so strange and again it's a shame because i legitimately i, I wouldn't say i kind of bought into the hype i thought oh shit this should actually be a legitimate kind of um person who could maybe make the left a little bit more palatable in the in the u.s maybe kind of get people interested to talk about very progressive ideas but presented in a very rational and clear way but she's essentially which is maybe might explain why the right were always kind of right on her and their reaction because they maybe saw a lot of themselves in her right and it's like you're phony you're acting you're trying to pretend you're one way but it's actually the other way um you know it continues it says um for example did you know many less officials regularly attend due to our responsibilities well why don't you don't attend in why don't make a stand and actually you know have morals or have a backbone or have ethics or whatever it may be called and don't go why do you have to go you don't have to go you get offered tickets of course but you don't have to take them 
But uh, anyway, continue says that was one of my that was one of many yesterday. Did you know that if you live in the NYC area, you can go to the Met, including the same costume exhibit that the wealthy saw last night, for as little as a dollar as you'd like. Um, to check it out this weekend because the Met belongs to the people. No, it doesn't. Nothing about the Met Gala belonged to the people. The Met Museum, maybe later on down the line, but that spectacle that every, the thing that everyone wants isn't the museum. No one gives a shit about the museum apart from the people that had their stuff, you know, shown in there. Most people saw the spectacle of the Met Gala, that red carpet those interviews those flamboyant dresses and they wanted to be there right it was like a it was like everyone's personal princess story no one's thinking and dreaming of getting invited to the flipping met gala to go and look at stuff that they have no idea that they can understand they want to go and oogle and stare at and try and touch their you know hero celebrities the people they look up to that's what they actually want not the other thing but hey what do i know what do i know <laughs> 